And if you haven't watched this, I this is like 100% mandatory viewing. If you go to my YouTube channel and watch that one, Macrometrics. So, so this this video is you have to watch it if you if you care about what's going to happen or what what is happening in real life. Um, but the I guess of that whole thing is one of the first points, which is actually the most important um, thing here. If I can find it, so this is the the health metrics, and one of the biggest indicate like things in my view is the currency velocity. So look at this. Like, this is why when people say, well, they can just print their way into Bolivia, look at Japan, they're, you know, 250% debt to GDP or whatever. But the thing is, if velocity gets to zero, or near zero, you know, what, what is <clears throat> $20 trillion times zero? It's zero. Um, so if the, the only reason they're printing money is because the velocity is slowing down dramatically. And it has been since even before the tech bubble crash. So this is why eventually they can print as much as they want. It's not going to do anything if no one's transacting with each other, uh, which is another reason why we need to look at the PMI. But Fashion, sorry. I always ignore the chat box for some reason. Uh, I think you're in your so yeah, such high premium on silver compared to gold. Yep, yeah, there is. What, what do you think about dollar deflation Okay, can you be more specific? Are you talking about monetary deflation or price inflation? I think you're talking about monetary inflation. Uh, but the world doesn't actually need that... Min that the, 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 the world is flooded with do dollars at the moment. Absolutely flooded. Because don't forget, China has a huge amount of dollars. Um, or do dollar denominated debt. And they know that the dollar is like this... this like every dollar they have is like an ice cube. They know the longer they hold that dollar, the weaker it's going to become. Because simply the Fed is buying everything. They're printing everything out of, out of. They're buying everything from thin air. So yeah, every dollar. That's you why they're buying so much gold and land. They own Australia. They're buying. They're using checkbook diplomacy in Africa as opposed to gun diplomacy, which is what the U.S. does and France does. So yeah, basically Africa is interesting. So when you when you look at Africa. You've had the Brits, the French, the Belgians, and the US basically go, I like your land, I'm going to buy it. If you don't let me buy it, you're going to have my gun, i.e. a bullet. <laughs> um, and that's how we've treated Africa and the Middle East for 200 years now, or more. And now we've got the Chinese coming along going, hey, um, how about whatever the, the white people are giving you, we'll just double the, the, the asking price. And we'll we'll give you that, <laughs> and and they're just being much more friendly with Africa in general. I think it's even beyond that. I mean, I heard not not DR Congo, the other one, Congo Brazzaville, many years ago. Their their GDP was two billion. China turned up and said, "We'll invest five billion in your country. We'll build infrastructure, schools. We get all of the mines. We'll employ local workers, like forty percent. We'll invest all. And basically, we're just going to lift up your country out of poverty. Yeah. But we get all your gold. Yeah, exactly." So it was just like a real win-win. Yeah, and the dictator or, or king or whatever is in that country, they establish their power for a lot longer. They get massive, they, they top slice, they get massive profits personally, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what the CIA and the US have been doing across the world forever. China's just doing it with, I guess, a bigger checkbook these days and less. Not mind you, I don't know. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. But anyway... Um, sorry, I'm dancing around your question here because I just want to cover a few points. So basically, China has loads of dollars. They go, shit, I don't want these fake monopoly money. I need to actually convert the fake money into real physical shit. So China's just using all the dollars they're getting to buy stuff. Um, so, and obviously don't forget, we still have the petrodollar. So, well, mind you, so th again, there's another counter argument to all this is that now oil is falling massively. Okay, obviously it hasn't. It's it's on an uptick at the moment, but the the big scheme of things is oil has fallen from one fifty down to one hundred and fifty dollars a barrel down to what thirty five or whatever it is now, um, which means less oil, um, uh, less money base, may, less money is sloshing around the oil in the industry. As in, you're not having to spend so much money to buy the the barrels of oil oil that you need, which means there are less dollars 
in the whole oil market, i.e. the world. Um, but with with the currency supply growing, there's way, 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 way more dollars in the world. So I don't think that's a problem. The the problem we're getting at the moment is you have to understand. Well, I apologise, and I should apologise too for sending you off down the rabbit hole. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. Uh, no, no I, I I like this stuff. So we have let's just call it USM two US currency supply. It's doing that. Okay, so money's going up. We've got velocity doing this okay and the, the velocity us um let's just call it mv um that's going down which is actually why in fact this should be let's see over here so technically this is what's happening velocity is going down the the, the the economy is slowing down so what's happening is that they're printing to get out of it okay so as a result the net they're trying to create a net outcome of that or even slightly up so that say that's zero percent. They want the magic two percent inflation. Okay, that's their their Goldilocks. So <clears throat> that that's happening. But now enter this this utter rubbish, or well not rubbish, as in this this trigger. Okay, let's call it a trigger. Trigger COVID has triggered all sorts of stuff. Whether you believe it, you don't believe it, I don't really care. What we cannot argue is that COVID has triggered lots of reactions in the world um, and that's the key thing is reactions um, <clears throat> and one of the things is that um, COVID has triggered faster M2 creation so US money so it so we were going you know M2 was like this and now it's doing this so what's happening you would you would look at this extra um, currency or dollar creation increasing and go oh okay this should well this is monetary inflation without a shadow of a doubt but the question is a lot of people then go oh look look at this extra money monetary inflation this means real inflation and when I say real inflation I mean dollars you know price inflation real inflation should also go up now, in a normal circumstance, yeah, that is true. However, every time a debt... I think, yeah, that's pretty much the only two things. So every time someone pays off a debt, or a debt is just goes bust, you know, you know, a company owes a bunch of debt, it goes and it liquidates, the debt is then destroyed. So basically, every time a debt is destroyed, that, that's the caveat. So and a debt is destroyed either i.e. by defaulting on it or paying it off when a debt is destroyed that shrinks the currency supply so that so so what so what's actually happening right now is is twofold so if we have another chart over here <clears throat> we're getting obviously currency doing this but we're also starting to have lots of debt also being destroyed. Now, at what rate? I don't know. I'd have to look into it. Um, and so at the moment, yeah, we'll probably... The overall trend is on the up, upside. But I think the real effects we're, we're going to see in one to ten years' time. Okay? And the, the reason being is that they can start doing helicopter money. And they can start... Um, that's a helicopter, by the way. They can start chucking down dollars sorry to interrupt again i keep hearing the term helicopter money everywhere what does it mean ah oh, good yeah good good question so another one little tangent sorry people um so financial stimulus so let's call it finstem uh stim and helicopter money they're two real different things so financial stimulus qe um you know the central banks buying government bonds all that sort of shenanigans all the money simply just goes to the institutions so it's like the billionaire billionaires effectively end up with the money so owners of banks lenders insurance corporations general electric all the companies that are basically being bailed out um, and so the money never enters the actual economy because it just goes straight into the stock market and, and the property market etc or mainly the stock and financial market and then some of it filters into, into stocks a way of understanding this is like, hey, we've got ten billion dollars. 
ten billion dollars. Um, we're just going to give a billion dollars each to each of our ten, you know, CEO friends. Okay, but what happens to the velocity of money when you do that? Well, a CEO that just gets an extra billion dollars, they're not going to spend that, are they? They're just going to help clean up their balance sheet. They're just going to have it as a rainy day fund. Nothing's going to happen. So velocity of money doesn't, or nothing, it does nothing, really. But what if you gave ten billion dollars to, um, you know, a hundred thousand people, or ten billion dollars to a million people? All ev all of a sudden, everyone, <coughs> what what will happen is that instead of ten people getting billion dollars and nothing really happens, if you give everyone, I don't know, twenty thousand dollars, what do you think people are going to do with that? So. A lot of people will spend it. Some will buy property. Some will buy crypto. Some, you know, they'll they'll pay down debt or etc. So, all in all, basically the velocity of money is going to go up a bit, okay? Because you know, if you got twenty, if all of us in this call right now got twenty grand, like we would spend a, a far bigger portion of that twenty grand into the real economy than these billionaires would, if that makes sense. Now let's rewind it a bit. Again, I'm having to, da I'm dancing all over the place. So what helicopter money, going back to your question, is basically money to people. That is basically it. That is the short answer which I should have started off with. Financial stimulus is basically money to the institutions and the banks. Helicopter money is like shit. Um, <clears throat> so when velocity, when MV, let's call it USMV, money velocity, starts to really do this, the only way they can get things going again is like, shit, we need literally 10,000 kilograms of morphine inje injection. So that is when they go, right, let's get the Chinook out, or, the, you know, let's get the helicopter out, and let's actually just give billions and billions of dollars to actual the population and hope that the population goes and spends it in the economy. But there is a massive, massive but with all of this. <laughs> Helicopter money, if we all had helicopter money in January, that would have been great. No one was scared of anything. Everyone got 20 grand, 50 grand, 10 grand, whatever. We'd go and spend it. We'd buy a new car. We'd buy a whatever. Go on holiday. We, we. But now, post-COVID, remember, COVID is a trigger. And, and this trigger is going to change people's habits. And what you cannot, what you absolutely cannot argue with is that people's habits, especially their money habits have now changed and I think irre irre irrevocably uh, irre irrevocably irrevocably um, <clears throat> so what what we're now seeing is most people if all of a sudden they got a big helicopter payday loan or pay not on loan they got a paycheck and they got you know a bunch of money land in I don't think people are now going to blow it, are they? They're going to be like, oh, thank God, this is going to help me pay off debt. This is, I'm, I need a war chest, I just need a rainy day fund because most people, like 90% of people don't have a war, uh, let's call it rainy, rainy day fund, an RDF, um, and they'll just sit on it. They may, yeah. So, what is the effect of monetary velocity when people pay off debt and have just sit on, on all of this money? Remember, paying off debt destroys money. So, what then happens is that causes deflation. And people sitting on, their, on these big paychecks, that's also going to exacerbate monetary velocity to go zero. So, what then happens? Remember, everything is a reaction. So... We, they give helicopter money and they go oh, okay let's I mean, if you look at in the UK with the whole corona stimulus we're touching what probably 500 billion pounds something like that I don't know I'm, I haven't really looked so don't watch the news um, <clears throat> and that's you know to pay, you know the corona business interruption loans the payment uh, the, the you know the furloughing scheme and all that sort of stuff that isn't helicopter money by the way this is still financial stimulus or trying to prop up the market if they then go, oh my god, nothing's happening, velocity's still dropping, we may, and they go, right, screw this, we need to get have some sort of UBI, universal basic income, or just a one-off check, just to re, 
you know, they may go, right, screw coronavirus, we need the economy to really kickstart. Everyone, here's a 10 grand paycheck. Uh, or here's all of your taxes that you paid for the last two years back in a lump sum. Hoping that people go out spending. But remember, what's going to happen is this. People will be like, oh, sweet, I can pay off my debt, which means I'll be spending less per month. I can sit, have a rainy day fund because everything is so scary. I'm not going to do anything. So then what does the UK government do? The, the, the government then goes, oh shit, we just we just spunked like, you know, two billion in, into the economy and nothing's actually happened. Um, what do we do? Um, mono, you know, velocity, this, is still going down. Okay, let's get proper rainy de um, helicopter money out. We will just give everyone 50 grand lump sum. Every man, woman and child and unborn fetus, 50 grand. Because we just we just got to get them spending enough, okay. Now, there will be a level where people go, "I'm paying off debt. I'm sitting on it. I'm doing nothing, do nothing." And there will be a point where it will get to, "Okay, I've paid off all my debt. I've got a big rainy day fund now. Oh, and I've just got an extra paycheck. Cool. Uh, you know." There will be that that pivot, you know, that seesaw pivoting thing of do do nothing to spend, where it'll tip the balance, and everyone goes, boom, time to spend. Everything's open, virtual reality is kicking off. You know, I'm going to spend two grand on a fancy new VR kit or whatever. Let's go on holidays. Let's buy a new car. The new Tesla's come out or whatever, and everyone starts spending. Guess what happens next? Remember, trigger, reaction, all that sort of stuff. Everyone starts spending. Velocity starts to pick up again. But now, what have you just done? You have just flooded, you've absolutely flooded the economy with pounds. So what now happens? You now have runaway inflation. As in, real inf price inflation because you just flooded the market and now all of a sudden all of this helicopter money which and by the way they won't the first bit they do won't touch the sides they'll do you know helicopter money nothing's happening helicopter money nothing's happening helicopter nothing's happened and then they'll go screw this companies you you, you don't have to pay corporation tax this year you don't have to pay any you don't we're going to scrap VAT and the public are going to get big chunks of money let's hopefully that kicks up the economy <clears throat> and then they'll get past this pivot point where everyone goes, ah, sweet, I've now got my rainy day fund. Um, let's start spending. Runaway inflation happens. Prices for everything starts going up because everyone's just spending. I mean, like everyone will be like, oh, okay, well, everyone's spending. Let's just put our prices up. Um, so, and that's what will happen. A lot of businesses will do that. But then everyone goes, shit, price is now really rocketing up. And at this rate, my savings isn't going to save much you know oh my god actually I just need to spend all of this money as quick as I can um, before my savings are because you know with inflation savers get absolutely reamed when there's real 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 inflation or price inflation going up so they then go oh okay, let's just spend everything so that's when you have big inflation and then some countries end up in hyper inflation <clears throat> so Going back, oh my god, I've just gone off on like a half hour tangent on with this one question. <laughs> um, what do you think about dollar deflation? Mm, yeah, going back to this, I think yeah, it'll be minimal. But ultimately, we're going to see big inflation. Does that make sense, everyone? Yes, yes thank you very much. Yes, it does. Um, any... Oh, and by the way, this is great because cryptos go through the roof, gold and silver go through the roof, Tesla stock will eventually go through the roof. <laughs> um, I don't own any yet, but I want to. Um, <clears throat> I, yeah, so this is why I am really banking hard and going all in on um, on non uh, non inflationary assets. non-inflationary slash or even better deflationary assets and when I say these terms what I mean is the supply so I am going massively all in on things where the supply is non-inflationary as in units of that thing like uh, hell I use let's use chicken nuggets 
if chicken if the the world's supply of chicken nuggets is non-inflationary as in it remains sideways or if it's going down slowly that that's when I that's what I want to buy I want to buy these chicken nuggets that are non-inflationary or deflationary whereas stocks aren't you, you know any company can just pluck out of their ass any new and issue any number of stocks that they wish um, or share capital shares sorry um, but what is non-inflationary gold gold is non-inflationary that grows the current the, the supply of gold grows in accordance with um, human population growth um, and Bitcoin is technically a deflationary asset because yes with halving I know it's 6.25 per block or every 10 minutes etc but guess what the currency supply is growing up and the human population supply is going up faster than Bitcoin supply is going up so this actually makes it a net deflationary asset which is yeah so like I'm on in internally I'm in two minds I mean like uh, the the humane part of me is like going I really hope this doesn't happen because if this does happen a lot of people are going to end up bankrupt bust like all that's going to happen is the, the rich poor divide will get bigger a lot of people that have zero money skills will get absolutely screwed over they'll do what the masses do and and the reason all of this happens time in time out like throughout history is because the masses haven't got a f freaking clue on how to manage money and or to even they, they don't have the optics they don't know this they don't they, they have no idea about all of this um sorry <laughs> okay these people are chameleons um but um yeah and so this is why it happens because humans the sheep will always do the same thing so part of me is going to be very sad that a lot of people get screwed over because they will just go and spend everything on stuff that doesn't grow and then get absolutely wasted um, financially. But for you guys, I, you know, part of me wants to be your your monetary Noah, <laughs> and we have the Ark, and our Ark is basically bullion and Bitcoin. And our trading bot, which we can trade up and down, you know, as as and wish. Um, sounds really wanky that your monetary Noah. No, um, I don't mean that. I, I just think like we can use this to massively leapfrog our own net worth. So if helicopter money comes, please don't just spend it on holidays and like stuff that doesn't grow. I mean, yeah, put it in your business if you if your business will grow faster than inflation, but like. Does, does this make sense or what I'm actually really curious about is anyone here massively disagree with all of this because I, I like finding the the gaps of communication if that makes sense is that that gap of misunderstanding or miscommunication where is where the real gems gems lie just to check um, when the helicopter money comes either put it in your business or invest it into crypto or gold silver kind of thing yeah sure. so not everyone's in the luxury position of having a business which can i'm squeezing all of these doodles but obviously we can't read the, the previous ones down but um i should have done this on my normal notepad um so yeah if you have a business with 